The role of the brain in language functioning has been of central concern in psycholinguistic inquiry. So it is only natural that we take a brief look at the brain and the areas that have been identified for language. The brain is made up of two hemispheres, the right and the left. Each cerebral hemisphere is divided into four sections or lobes. These lobes control different functions. Through lateralization, the left hemisphere has been identified as a language brain due to the presence of language processing areas there. The center for speech is in the left hemisphere of the cerebral cortex. Two areas known as Broca's area and Wernicke's area are involved in storing information related to speech. Click on the areas of the brain to know more. Broca's area stores information needed for speech production. It is responsible for programming the motor cortex to move the tongue, lips and speech muscles to articulate words. In simple terms, once a linguistic stimulus is processed and understood, impulses will be sent out from Broca's area to order the speech mechanism to form the right response. Wernicke's area stores information needed for arranging the words of a learned vocabulary into meaningful speech. This is the part of the left hemisphere that has been identified as the comprehension center. Linguistic stimuli, either visual or auditory, are turned into electrical impulses and processed in this area. We could say that it is this area that does the actual listening and seeing. To speak a word that is heard, information must first get to the primary auditory cortex. From the primary auditory cortex, information is transmitted to the posterior speech area, including Wernicke's area. From Wernicke's area, information travels to Broca's area, then to the primary motor cortex. To speak a word that is read, information must first get to the primary visual cortex. From the primary visual cortex, information is transmitted to the posterior speech area, including Wernicke's area. From Wernicke's area, information travels to Broca's area, then to the primary motor cortex. Also known as language disorders, are caused by damage to the language processing areas of the brain, namely Broca's and Wernicke's areas. Damage or lesions to these areas could cause serious language impairment. Broca's aphasia would affect speech production. Speech that is produced becomes short, almost telegraphic in nature. The language is, however, meaningful. In simple terms, although the input is understood, the response is impaired because impulses cannot get through from Broca's area. Wernicke's aphasia is characterized by speech that is nonsense or meaningless, though it is phonologically and grammatically accurate. In simple terms, input that is received cannot be deciphered. As a result, it is not understood. Hence, this amounts to a nonsensical response. Click on the buttons in the graphic to know more. Pierre Paul Broca made the first diagnosis of the condition in resulting from damage to Broca's area. That condition has since been named Broca's aphasia, and it involves a lack of ability to produce coherent language, including spoken, written, and signed forms. Patients suffering from Broca's aphasia are able to use the organs of speech, the articulators, to produce sounds and even single words but they cannot produce sentences or express thoughts. Often, patients will find one word or a short string of words and repeat them over and over in an attempt to communicate thoughts and may sometimes be successful in communicating, but they will not be able to grammatically express themselves. Similarly, they can draw, but are not capable of writing coherent speech. The key is that they can understand speech and often can form ideas to communicate, 
but they cannot put words together to communicate those ideas. It has been suggested over the years that problems with broker's area may be able to be compensated for by other areas of the brain, including the corresponding area of the non-dominant hemisphere. This suggestion is due to the somewhat transient nature of broker's aphasia symptoms, as stroke and injury victims can regain use of their speech mechanisms. Stuttering has also been linked to areas encompassed by broker's area, though this disorder is not well understood or explained. Patients suffering from damage to vernix area have difficulty understanding language in any form. They can speak fluently, forming long and complex sentences, but their strings of words often lack coherent meaning. They frequently use vague terms and roundabout descriptions that never coalesce into complete thoughts. From the prolific speech production of patients, it is easy to see that this is not a difficulty with speech production but with language production. It has also been shown that damage to vernix area is not as transient as that done to Broca's area. The source of acoustic energy for speech sound production comes from modulation in the air flowing from the lungs to the lips, called the airstream. We breathe in air into our lungs to serve as a power supply for the production of speech. During regular quiet breathing, the vocal tract is open and the air flows freely either through the nose or mouth. Some sounds are produced by modulating the airstream by the periodic opening and closing of the vocal folds of the glottis. The voiced or phonated sounds have a buzz-like quality. You can actually feel the vibration of your vocal folds by placing your fingers on your throat when you produce the sustained Sounds produced without the regular glottal pulsing are called voiceless sounds. You can feel the absence of vibration when you produce the sustained s. Click on the words to see the production of voiced and voiceless sounds. Zoo Nab B Shoe Nap T in this topic, we have identified the brain and the areas that have been identified for language as follows. The language hemisphere of the brain, the Broca's area and Wernick's area, aphasia and the physiology of speech. The attribute that sets us apart from other species is our ability to communicate simple and abstract ideas by means of language. Through language, with its infinite flexibility and creativity, we have managed to disseminate information down the ages and far into the future. However, using language is not easy, as it involves choosing from vast sets of words with an intricate system of meaning forming complex sentences using a large number of rules and putting these into a sequence of sounds or written symbols with precise articulation. Yet, we seem able to construct and manage this system without much effort from the samples of speech we hear. In no other instance is this clearer than in children. Research in linguistics and psychology has yielded a good deal about what children acquire and The study of child language acquisition is known as developmental psycholinguistics. Its main focus is to understand how children, although born completely without language, are able to acquire an extensive vocabulary, a complex phonological and grammatical system, and an equally complex set of rules for how to use their language appropriately in social settings Children's language development can generally be divided into a number of approximate stages. Note, however, that the stages overlap 
and the ages stated are a very rough guide. Crying or grunts, cooing, babbling, holophrastic, and telegraphic. Click on the buttons to know more. During the first four weeks of life, a child's first recognizable vocal activity is crying. Babies cry when hungry and when they are in pain. Strictly speaking, however, it is perhaps misleading to consider crying as a language stage, as it seems to be instinctive communication and more akin to an animal call system. So although crying may help to strengthen the lungs and vocal folds, both needed for speech production, it should not perhaps be regarded as part of speech development. The child goes through a cooing phase, producing superficially vowel-like sounds. Some call it gurgling or mewing. Cooing, since universal and like crying, may help the child gain control of his, her speech mechanism. Gradually, consonant-like sounds become interspersed in the cooing. By around six months, the child has reached the babbling stage. The consonants are often made with the lips or teeth, with the sequences sounding like mama, dada, or papa. When hearing these sounds, parents normally assume, aesthetically but wrongly, that their child is addressing them. Although we cannot always tell what a baby may be trying to express, researchers believe that these early attempts at communication include both proto-declaratives, language about something, and proto-imperatives, language that's something we've done or given. Simultaneously with babbling, and from around eight months, the child begins to imitate intonation patterns. This makes his, her, vocal output much like speech that mothers are often heard commenting. I'm sure she's talking. I just can't catch what she's saying. By about one year of age, children begin to produce recognizable single-word sentences of their language. This is known as the one-word or holophrastic stage. By 18 to 20 months, children typically have acquired approximately 50 words. Despite the different communities around the world, the first words spoken by children are similar, both in their phonetic form and in kinds of meaning that underlie them. Studies on this stage of development reveal that children understand more than five times as many words as they actually produce. Parents often make the mistake that children at this stage are naming objects, as the early words tend to be quite nouny. These early nouns tend to reflect basic level categories. For example, children acquire words such as car before superordinate terms like vehicle or subordinate terms like sedan. Note also that children do show individual variation in the types of words that comprise this stage. Some acquire more social terms, example hi, bye-bye, while others acquire more nouns.